Good morning and God bless you. I'm so excited on this Sunday morning, January 24th, 2021. It's a great day to praise and worship the Lord. God's will, worship service. Amen. Come on, put your hands together while you're right there at home and give God the praise that he deserves. Does anybody want God to show off his glory? I know I do. I want him to show up in all of his glory. And we ought to give all the glory and magnification to the Lamb who was slain so that we can be saved, healed, and delivered. Come on, let's bless his name. Come on, let's, come on, let's give him glory. Lord, we love you today. God, we bless you today. God, we lift you up in this place. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be magnified. God, as the songwriter wrote, you deserve it. You deserve all of our praise. You deserve all of our hallelujahs. You deserve every thank you, Jesus. God, you are high and lifted up, and there's none higher than you. And God, we desire for the show up, for you to show up in all of your glory. God, we need your presence. God, we need your power to be released in our lives. Lord, fall down in this place. Holy Spirit, saturate us. Holy Spirit, empower us. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we've shown up ready to worship you, God. We've shown up ready to hear a word from you. I may be standing here as your proclaimer, as your preacher, as your son, telling people about your goodness, but God, we've come to see you. We're thankful for those that we can fellowship with in the comment section on social media, but God, we've shown up ready ready to see you show off your glory, God, in the name of Jesus, the glory that still saves, the glory that delivers, the glory that heals, that we can find everything we need in your presence, God. You are the desire of our heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And so we just bless you. Lord, we just love you. We pray that you will give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of your word on today, God. We thank you for every brother and sister that belongs to this ministry, those who are just tuning in, who may have a church home or who may be unchurched and unsaved. God, we thank you for the miracle of being able to be in your presence, Father. And we pray that a word will be spoken that is relevant, timely, that will meet us right where we are so that we can be the people that you have called us to be. God, hide me behind the cross, Father. Let me decrease that you may increase. Less of me and more of you to, until there is none of me and all of you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, we bless your name. God, we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen. We're still in our sermon series uh, for this month, Take Back the City. Hashtag, this is God's city. We know our thing that will be done for this year is boss up. God has called us to stand up to speak up with the truth of his word and do what he's called us to do. And he's called us to be effective in the city that we live in, being efficient, being focused to go out and share our faith on a daily basis, using all the creative methods, using all of our gifts, using all of our resources, everything we can to let God know we are serious about the call and the mandate and the mantle he's placed on us to go out and do his work. Let's go to Psalms 127. Psalms 127. Psalms 127. God has truly been blessing us this month with the word, and it's been off the chain. It's been exciting. We've been learning about coming home to rebuild the city out of Nehemiah. Uh, we've learned what it looks like when God takes over the city in Joshua. Last week, we learned about uh, a saved city is a safe city coming out of Proverbs 25. And on this morning, we're coming out of Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. In vain, you get up early and stay up late, working hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the one he loves. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord and offspring of reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons born in one's youth. Happy is the man who has filled his quiver with them. They will never be put to shame when they speak with their enemies at the city gate. I'm going to go back to verses 1 and 2 of Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. 
the Lord wants to speak to us on this morning about save the city. Save the city. I'm a big fan of DC Comics, Marvel comic movies, uh, any cartoons I knew that grew up, that I, that I watched growing up, that had a hero, that had a person that you knew that was going to step up and save the day, if you will. Be it Superman, be it Spider-Man, be it the X-Men, be it the Avengers, G.I. Joe, the Ninja Turtles, Captain Planet, He-Man, the Thundercats. If, if you think about it, all of those different types of cartoons and movies always had men as well as women who showed up when disaster would strike, who showed up when trouble would alert, showed up when problems would arise, and they would go from being ordinary to extraordinary. They would go from just doing the day-to-day -day things that they did to going and springing into action when there was opposition, when there was evil that was around. They were the ones who showed up to show people in the world at large that good was still here and ultimately good is going to prevail. We know the world that we live in on today. Man, so much we've seen. All that we have gone through from 2020 coming into 2021 We've seen a pandemic. We've seen racial tension. We've seen people, uh, more and more people go unemployed, go hungry. Unfortunately, we've even had to deal with the tragedy of thousands among thousands of people getting sick and dying from the coronavirus. We've seen a horrible insurrection that took place at the Capitol on January the 6th of this month. So many things have gone on. And through it all, all of us are asking the question, who is going to come and save us from all of this tragedy? Who is going to come and save the day? We watch movies with the hope that we have somebody in our lives, that somebody would do it. Sometimes we may look for someone to save the day on the police department. But unfortunately, there are certain things that go on on certain police departments that we can't put our full trust in. We may look for even who's in the White House to do it, but we can't lay all that burden on President Biden and Vice President Harris. That's a too heavy of a burden to bear. We may even look to our parents and look to our mentors or our leaders in the church or even the school systems. We may even look to the doctors, but we know the doctors are even overwhelmed. Nurses are overwhelmed. Who can we look to? We may search all over the place. We can read so many books. We can go to so many places and so many workshops and seminars, and we try to look up research on how we can make our world better. We try to give of our resources, and we try to do so much in our own strength and in our own intellect because we're educated and we are resourceful people, and we've come so far. But I've come to discover that until we go to the one who was born in a manger, who came and rose as a man, living out God's will on earth, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he teached, he preached, he lived out the Father's will, he died one Friday, was buried and rose again. His name is Jesus Christ. And I found out that he's the true hero. He's the one that not, not only will save the day, but he's already saved the day. When did he do it? On one Friday night, out on Calvary's Hill, at the Golfa. He saved the day for all of us. And I know we're usually used to hearing this part at the end of the message, but we need to know from the introduction who the real hero is. Kirk Franklin talked about it on an album several years ago. He's the hero, and he's already saved the day. He saved the day, not with a cape. He saved the day not with x-ray vision or lasers coming out of his eyes. He saved the day with three nails and a cross and a crown of thorns on his head. He saved the day letting people know that in spite of death, he overcome death. He overcame sin, and he overcame the grave, and he overcame Satan. The same God that showed up in the form of man named Jesus Christ, who showed up like a lamb to lay down his life, is going to come back as a lion ready to take life back from everything that the enemy has wreaked havoc with in the earth. We serve a God that literally takes note and notices everything that goes on the earth, and we need not. Look at what's going on in the world today and think that God doesn't care. He does care. 
And for anybody that says, well, where is God in this? And where is God in that? And where is God during this pandemic? And where is God in the midst of this bad policing? And where is God in the midst of all of these crazy politics that's going on? And where is God in the midst of all of these people that are acting crazy in the city streets? God is in the same place he was when Jesus died on the throne looking for his people to respond with his word. If you want hungry people to get fed, then you go feed them. If you want people that are naked to get clothed, then you go clothe them. If you want people to be encouraged that are discouraged, you go encourage them. Who is the you that I'm talking about? I'm talking about those of us, you and I, that belong to the church of Jesus Christ. We have the responsibility. We have the obligation. We have the divine purpose that God has put on us. He's placed on us with his name to go out and tell the world that Jesus still saves, Jesus still heals, and Jesus still delivers. We need to know that Jesus already saved the city, but if a saved city is going to look like a safe city, we got to go out and share the gospel and give people what they need. And guess what? I live long enough to know that at one point in time, there was something that I needed needed, even when I didn't know I needed, but when somebody showed up with the need, when somebody showed up with what I needed, even when I didn't know I needed it, I thank God that the person that he sent was obedient to the word and gave me what I needed, even when I didn't want it and when I think I didn't need it. If anybody here knows that you need the Lord more than what you know, I thank God for the people that say things like that. I love you more than you know. What they're saying is, is I'm not just saying that in words. But I do things behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Come on, parents, talk to me. You can relate to this. Your children don't realize the sacrifices that you put forth to make sure their day-to-day -day lives are comfortable. That's letting them know you love them more than they will ever know. Come on, we serve a God that loves us more than we will ever know. For God so loved the world, thank God for Jesus, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting Life, I feel God in this place. Why? Because he's already saved the day. But if the place is going to be safe around us, if our city, if our community, if our state, if our country, if our world is really going to be great, not great again, going back to when those of us that were black and brown were slaves again, not going through sharecropping again, not going through segregation again, not dealing with crazy social injustice again, but really a great nation, a great people that are not great according to America's standard, but great according to God's standard. What did he say? We are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. We are a peculiar nation. We are a peculiar people. We are a people of purpose, power, and praise, and provision, and prayer, and power. Why? Because we got a loving God that walks with us. He's the Prince of Peace. And when you got the priest of, when you got the prince of peace around you, just like in the gospel text, Jesus can be sleeping. But since we know we serve a God who doesn't sleep nor slumber, we with the power of God, like Jesus, can say, "Peace be still." I know there's chaos going around. I know there's craziness going around. But I'm not going to allow the crazy or the chaos make me chaotic, make me crazy, make me corruptible, have me confused. But I'm going to look to the God in Christ that gives clarity, that makes sure who will tell me that the coast is clear so that we can walk in the authority and the power that God has given us. I was watching Selma the other day. And you had some of the officers who didn't want Dr. King and these thousands of other people made up of different color shades marching from Selma to Montgomery so they can vote. And they threw out tear gas so that the cameras and the people that was watching the news, the millions of people that was watching the march on TV that couldn't be there in person, wouldn't be able to see all of the harm and the evil that was taking place behind the cloud of the tear gas. Good God. The enemy loves to throw out tear gas of confusion in the atmosphere so that we can't see the evil, so we can't see the confusion, so that our clarity is thrown off, so we can't see him. But, oh, I told you one of my favorite cartoons with Thundercats. Oh, God, 
Lionel would take the sword that would look like a dagger on his side, but when he took it out of his side and put it in the air, good God Almighty, he would say, sword, give me sight beyond sight. And when we got the sword of God's word, and when it's laying down wherever we place our Bible, when we pick it up off the table, or we pick it up off of our side, and we lift it up in the air, and we say, Lord, with your word, the sword of the spirit, give me sight beyond sight. Help me to see beyond the tear gas of confusion. I don't want to cry tears of being confused, but I want to cry tears of joy because victory is simply in one name. And it's at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Getting into the text, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builder labors over it in vain. The ministry we are part of, the church we are a part of, we have to make sure that the Lord is the one who is leading us to build. The same God that led Nehemiah to go back to Jerusalem to build the wall. The same God that led Solomon to build the temple. The same God that led Zechariah and Haggai to preach and teach and prophesy about how important it was to go back and build the wall. The wall representing the protection of God. The city representing the people of God who are worshiping and praising in the presence of God. It is, it is, it is important. Now, we learned this morning in discipleship training that we don't want to make the church a fortress. In other words, we don't want to make it a place where we feel safe, but we don't make other people on the outside of the church feel unwelcome. We want everybody to come into the art of safety, but this is what we got to we got to build a fortified wall of protection against not outsiders that need Jesus, but against evil, against principalities, against spiritual wickedness. We have to do our part to make sure that we stay on the wall, not a wall that disrespects and overrides or overlooks those who are immigrants, who are in need, who are locked in camps, who need food, who need to be reunited to their families. No, we need a wall of protection, a fortified city, a fortified wall that says this is the place where the Lord shows up. This is the place where we get fed by God. This is the place where God speaks to us so that we can strategically plan and we can go out and execute that plan with the Spirit of God leading us. This is the place where we learn how to love. This is the place where we learn how to walk in peace. This is the place where we learn how to forgive. This is the place where we learn how to do what God has called us to do. And unless the Lord builds the house, those of us that are laboring, laboreth in vain. If God did not give us the plan, if God is not the one that has spoken to us, if he's not the one that is leading us, then that ministry, that business, even our families, our communities will fail. The reason why we've been dealing with a lot of the stuff we've been dealing with is because we have left God ultimately out of the equation. God has been an afterthought. Some of us never consider him or only consider him after everything goes to shambles, after damage has already been done. But God is wanting to be first. He desires to be first. He demands and commands to be first. Why? Because he's the self-existing one. Before there was anything, not only on this planet, but in this universe, in this atmosphere of what we know to be in life, he always was, always is, and always will be. Who better to seek on how to live this life? What better book to have than the word of God from Genesis to Revelation to lead and guide us to make sure we are living this life the right way. And so, unless the Lord builds the house, those of us that are building laboreth in vain. Listen, he got the blueprint. He knows the materials that are needed to build the spiritual, mental, and emotional 
homes. He, he's the one that's given the ideas, the creativity. He's the one that's given us our intellect. He's the one that's blessed us to be smart. He's the one that's given us the resources. Hence is the reason why he is the source of our strength and the strength of our life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and not get weary. We will walk and not faint. Why? Because he's the source. Hallelujah. And we need him to show us like he showed Noah. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Listen, if Noah doesn't use the materials, oh God, this is good. If Noah doesn't use the right materials to build the ark, the ark, once the waters come in, will break down. Why? Because even though he built an ark, the materials wasn't prepared for the force of the water that God was going to bring to hit against the ark as he was traveling. But since Noah was obedient and he used the exact materials with the exact measurements and built the ark and did exactly what God told him to do, when he and his family and the animals got on the ark, they were safe and they made the dry land. That's symbolic of the fact that what are we building our lives on? Is it on sinking sand? Or is it on a solid rock foundation of God's word? We know what happens when we build our lives on sinking sand. It may look real good. The house may look real good. But at the end of the day, it's sinking sand. The Reverend Dr. Tony Evans shares a story about how there was a crack in his wall. And so he called a man in to put some new plaster up and repaint over the crack and everything looked good. But then all of a sudden, the crack came back and as he put it, with a few cousins and friends as well. So he called that same man who came in and now did the job for free, replastered and painted the crack and everything looked good. But then, just like the first time, the second time, now the third time, the crack came back with many more cracks behind it. So he had to call in a specialist to come in and to see what was going on, why this particular part of the wall was always cracking. Come to find out, he had a shifting foundation. So no matter how much plaster or paint got put on the wall, there was always going to be a crack to remind him your foundation has shifted. What are you saying? Jesus is the foundation of the church. But if we're building on anything else outside of Jesus, if we're not building on the chief cornerstone, if we're not building on the rock of ages, we are in seeking sand territory and we are in a shifting culture that wants to tell us that Jesus' ways, God's word, and being led by the Holy Spirit is not the right way. We live in a time that, when, that people want to tell us, just put it up in the universe. And you need to watch out for people's vibes. And you need to be all about that energy. At the the end of the day, I get what you're saying, but God created the universe. The sun gives us the energy, and last time I checked, it's the Holy Spirit that leads us to check vibes. That's what we say in human terms, but in Bible terms and in Christian terms, that's discernment. I need to know what spirit you got. Try the spirit by the spirit. I don't want to take on worldly terms of, 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 of words that will lead us to get away from how God has called us to talk and how God has called us to live. We need to understand that the foundation we build on is Jesus. Period. There is none other. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. We live in the world in this shifting foundation that we live in this shifting culture, and we've all been caught up in it before, even in salvation, because we all want to be accepted. But here's the good news. We've already been accepted by Jesus. You don't have to worry about anybody trying to accept you for who they want you to be. Just be fine and okay and secure and satisfied and content that Jesus accepts you for who you are and will lead you to who you're supposed to be. Not who the magazines and the websites want you to be. Not who society wants you to be. Not being politically correct, but being Christ correct. By his rod of correction. <laughs> so that we can become who God has called us to be. And so 
our first point, if you will, is the Lord has to be the one building the house. The next part of that verse, unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays alert in vain. We can't, especially as men, we can't be the fathers and the husbands and the providers and the protectors and the priests and the prophets over our homes if we're not allowing the Lord to lead us. Our wives cannot follow us as we follow Christ. They can't work alongside of us. Our wives can't be the help meets that God has called them to be in our lives as we work together to love and obey the will of God and look out for each other and cover each other if we're not leading out with allowing God to lead us. If we have no vision, how will our family see where to go? We have to be the ones on our knees, gentlemen, brothers, men, praying unto God for him to give us vision. And for those of us that are in ministry leading out, not just for a vision for the church. God, what is the vision for my family? Show me how to be more sensitive and loving to my wife and to my sons and my daughters. And then, as there is a routine of spiritual health in the family, because it starts with the individual. As God is building us up as individuals, men or women. Because I know there's some single parents out there as well. And the epidemic of single parents is still made up of mothers. Shout out to my mother and so many mothers out there that have held down their children, not only when they were small, but even as they went from being teens to being adults. Still making sure that their children have what they need in every aspect of their life to succeed. And I pray even now for God to pour back in everything that every mother sacrificially has given to their children. That you won't leave this life in the name of Jesus. And so everything you've poured out is paid back to you in double, in Jesus' name. But we need to be in position because as God is pouring into us individually, then as we're healthy, we can then contribute to our family to be healthy. I want you to see the connection. And then as our family is healthy, then we can go into our church and be healthy and contribute to having a healthy church. And then when the church is healthy, when we're loving and doing God's will with the great commission and the great commandments, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that Jesus taught us and know that he is with us until the end of the age, teaching them the great commandment to love the Lord our God with all of our mind, our heart, and our soul, and our strength, and love, and love our neighbor as ourselves. As we obey the great commandment and the great commission, and we're the church that God has called us to be, healthy church, healthy family, healthy individuals, then can go out and then minister to the community. That we know that is sin sick. Those that are unsaved and unchurched so that we can have a healthy community. So that those boys and girls don't grow up to act a fool in the streets because they don't know order. All they know is anarchy. All they know is craziness. All they know is violence and evil. But if we go out with a message to say the same God that saved us when we were evil in our sin. See, we're not off the hook. Because we're saved does not mean we are holier than thou. Because if our sin of choice showed up, and if we got in the wrong, right, right type of wrong situation, all of us would fall to that sin. So don't get it twisted. None of us are better. But when we're healthy, we can go out and impact our community. And we have a healthy community that is made up of healthy families that come from healthy churches because you have healthy individuals. We then could go out into a city and a state and a country and make sure that more places than one is healthy for the name of Jesus. Somebody was saying, Pastor J. Lee Ray, that sounds real good, and you're real hopeful, but how are we going to do that? One life at a time, when the Lord is the one leading us to build, we're not laboring in vain. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, keep on working and abounding in the Lord. And know that your labor is not in vain. It's not in vain when you do it in Jesus' name. It's not in vain when you let him lead. And when we stay alert and aware, walking in what God has called us to do, when the Lord is the one who was watching over us, meaning he's always watching, 
But when we acknowledge him in all of his ways that he may direct our path because we're trusting, relying, and depending on him, we understand, we acknowledge that he's watching over us. So since he's watching over us, we're allowing him to speak to us as we put our ears open to his voice to speak to us so that we can have the right plan how to impact and influence others for Jesus. While the disciples in the Gospels were arguing about our earthly kingdom and earthly seats and earthly thrones, Jesus said the kingdom is not going to be established just here on earth. The kingdom has nothing to do with just a location where we go and worship. The kingdom desires to be established in our hearts. That's why the greatest commandment is loving God and loving people. That's the kingdom. And we live out those kingly principles here on earth. We're royalty. We are to have the mind of the king, but to have a heart of a servant. Jesus, the man of sorrows. Jesus, the suffering servant. Jesus, the God man. Jesus, the son of God. Jesus, the king of the Jews who had African and Jewish descent, ancestry in his bloodline. Jesus, the one who shows us the face of the Father. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, the lily of the valley, the rose of the Sharon. Jesus is the one that we look to to show us how to live among humanity God's way. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor over it in vain. The watchman stays alert in vain. If we're not acknowledging that the Lord watches over the city. We need God to lead and guide us, direct us, show us how to live life according to God's will. He's the hero. He's the one that's already come save the day. Jesus died. He was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures. Maybe you don't know the one who's able to save the city. He's already shown up, but he's wanting to save you from your own personal crisis. He's wanting to save you from your family dysfunction. He's wanting to save you from being confused about what's going on in your community, city, country, and world. Aren't you tired of the silent screams? Aren't you tired of silently crying at night on the inside? that cry out for help. God says, I'm here. Cast your cares upon me. Come unto me, all you that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today is the day for salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Brother John tells us, 1 John 1 and 9, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He did it for me and he still does it for me. And he can and will do it for you. I don't know where you are on today in this life. I don't know what you've been struggling with. But I know enough, if you're still alive and you're still here, you've seen enough in this past year coming into this year that can make any of us cry, that can break our hearts. And I'm reminded of a song that said, God, break our hearts for what breaks yours. I truly believe that the Lord himself has been grieved in what he has seen in the earth, not just from those who, who are unbelievers, but from his children. I remember last year the Lord spoke to me about I'm not hearing a urgent enough sound from my people, a desperate sound, a sound that resembles 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. God has his arms open like the Father in the gospel of St. Luke with his arms open wide to the prodigal son come on prodigal son come on prodigal daughter regardless of what you've done he has a purpose and plan for your life 
He desires to do great things through you. Maybe you are already saved, looking for a church home. God is raising up Thou Will Be Done Christian Church to be the church of Jesus Christ, to be another local fellowship connected to the body who is doing our very best to do His will and be a healthy part of making sure that His kingdom is established in the earth. If you desire to join us, to grow with us, and go deeper in God's will, we would love for you to be a part of our local fellowship. We honor and we thank God for you so much. Maybe you already saved, you belong to a, another church home, and but you chose to tune in on today just to support us. God bless you so much. If you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comment section. I pray that the word that the Lord has spoken through me to you for us truly encouraged and empowers you, educated you, that you were able to engage with God's word, and that you can be empowered to being who God has called you to be. If you desire to give to this ministry, dollar sign, that will be done CC. You can give on Cash App. Also, we have Venmo. It's a new giving app uh, that we have as well, Venmo. Uh, TWBDCC, look for it on there, and please give in whatever the Lord has purpose in your heart to give in tithes and offering. Thank you so much. We also have a P.O. box that you can mail your tithes and offering as well. We're just thankful unto God for all of his goodness, for all of his grace, all of his mercy. He's just so good. So there's nothing else. Please put your uh, prayer requests in the comment section. We're going to pray. Uh, I can't wait till next week. Uh, the last sermon for this sermon series. I've had so much fun. But uh, stay tuned to our next sermon series that's coming up. I'll be putting a flyer out on Facebook and Instagram. It's going to be an exciting one. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a great one. We're going to have a great time in God. Tune in for uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. We're going to be teaching out of the post-quarantine church book by Tom S. Rayner. Just learning and discovering how we can be effective in the post-pandemic era in this time that we're living in for God, using all the creative resources we have as the Holy Spirit leads us so that we can still be effective and efficient for his glory. Let us pray, and I pray that you have a great week coming up. Father, we love you. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for this word. We thank you for those who are coming to be saved, healed, and delivered. We thank you, God, that you've already saved the city through your son, that we're sealed by you. You, you selected us. You've saved us. Now we're sealed by your Holy Spirit. Father, now as you dwell in us, let us go out in boldness and do what you call us to do. We thank you for your word on today. We thank you for the fellowship and the worship and the praise uh, virtually online. We look forward to getting back into the building as well. But in the meantime, Father, I pray we continue to remain faithful. The church started in the home, so help us to be effective in the home. Help us to get more healthier in the home. So, God, as we, when we do go out into your house as well as your community, that we can reflect your glory, and that the church can reflect the people that you desire to raise up. Bless the offering, the tithes that were given to add to your house, to build this your kingdom, to be a blessing to those in need, to take care of the things that are needed for your house, that we will continue to make your house look more beautiful, take care of anything that needs to be taken care of. We love you and bless you and honor you. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and let every heart say amen. God bless you and continue to walk in God's will for your life.